Okay, uh, in this video, we have five limit problems to go through. Um, of these five, the last two are the more complicated ones, and we may not have time um, in this video to, to uh, completely solve those last two. So you may have to split this up into two videos to get all five problems taken care of. Um, the first problem is, suppose we have x squared minus 25 and is divided by x squared plus x minus 30 and we want to take the limit of this as x approaches 5. Now, the first thing you can always do is plug the number in and see if you get a reasonable answer. Uh, up here we're going to have 25 minus 25 is 0. Not a good start. And down here we're going to have 25 plus 5 is 30 minus 30. And again, we're getting this equals 0 over 0. And as we went through this in a previous video, 0 divided by 0 doesn't mean anything. Because um, we could have 5. 0 times 5, that's 0. Or we could have 500. 0 times 500, that's 0. Or we could have negative 1 tenth. 0 times that, that's 0. So when you have 0 divided by 0, it is totally indeterminate. There's no way to tell what it means. It might just be 0. Yes, but it doesn't have to be. It could be anything. So, let's look at this more closely. Um, down here in this denominator, can we factor this out? Um, we're looking for two numbers that when we multiply them together, we get negative 30. But when we add them together, we get plus 1. So obviously plus 6 and minus 5 come together. Or come to mind here. Let's see, we have x plus 6 times x minus 5. That's x squared plus 6x minus 5x. That's plus x minus 30. We're okay there. And then up here, we have an x squared and this is 5 squared, so the difference of 2 squares, so we can rewrite the numerator 2, x plus 5 times x minus 5, and we want this limit as x approaches 5. So, the parts here that give us trouble, those drop out, and now we can go ahead and just insert our value. 5 plus 5 is 10. 5 plus 6 is 11. So this equals 10 over 11. So again, once we were recognized how we can factor these, the problem pretty much just fell into place for us. Uh, let's see, suppose we have this problem here, uh, 3x squared divided by 4x squared plus 2x minus 1, and we want to take the limit of this as x goes to infinity. Well, let's see. Obviously, this is going to be infinity on top. And down here, that's going to be infinity. And is that just simply going to give us 1, then, for our limit? I think infinity divided by infinity is um, it should be one of these indeterminate forms here. I don't think that would be considered... I don't think this would be considered a valid answer. When we have this... It doesn't look like there's anything that we could factor this out by, obviously. Um, here we have x is 
all the way across to the second power, to the first power, to the zero power. Here you have an x squared on top. When you have this kind of a situation, then it can be useful to try to get rid of the x that's raised to the highest power, or actually divide everything by that x. In this case, that's 2. So what we do is we multiply the top and bottom of this by 1 over x squared. 1 over x squared, we don't want to put that equal sign in yet, we haven't done anything yet. 1 over x squared divided by 1 over x squared. I'm just multiplying this by 1. This divided by 1 over x squared, this is just 1. Now we go through 3x squared divided by x squared. Up here we have 3. Now we divide here by x squared. 4 squared divided by x squared. That's 4. Plus 2x divided by x squared. We have 2 divided by x minus 1 over x squared. And we want to take the limit of that as x goes to infinity. So this is going to be 0. This is going to be 0. And we get 3 fourths. So the limit 3x squared divided by 4x squared plus 2x minus 1 does not equal infinity over infinity. We thought might give us 1. It equals 3 fourths. Okay. Uh, let's look at this problem. Here we have 2 times n squared plus 5n minus 3 divided by n cubed plus 2n. And we want the limit of this as n approaches infinity. And again, if we just put n equals infinity, we get infinity divided by infinity again. That does us no good at all. So what we try what we did before, here the highest power of n is n squared. Here it's n cubed. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by 1 over n cubed. And again, that's just multiplying by 1. 1 over n cubed divided by 1 over n cubed is just 1. Okay, so here we're going to have 2 over n plus we're going to have 5 divided by n squared minus 3 divided by n cubed. And down here we're going to get n cubed divided by n cubed is 1 plus 2 divided by n squared. Now we want the limit as n goes to infinity. So that will make that 0. So we have 1 down here. We look at the numerator. That's going to be 0. That's going to be 0. That's going to be 0. So we have it equals 0 divided by 1. The limit is 0. And actually, before we went ahead and did all this stuff, we might have predicted that. If we're going to divide everything by n cubed, then clearly if that's the highest power, then clearly up here we're going to have terms that are going to end up being divided by n all the way across. Here, here, here. So you know right away the numerator is going to be 0. And of course that's going to go away to be 0. This will be 1. So we're going to have a 0 in the numerator and a non-zero number down here in the denominator, but 0 divided by that number will be 0. So whenever you have the limit of this, where maybe you have two polynomials divided by each other, if down here in the denominator 
the degree of that polynomial is higher than what it is in the numerator, you're almost certain right off the bat that's going to have zero for a limit. And let's see, we have two more problems prepared. They're a little bit more involved in these first three that we went through, and I'm not certain if we're going to have time to work both of them in this video. Um, let's stop here, come back, and join us for the next video, and we'll consider the last two problems, and they'll be a little bit more involved than the ones we've considered so far.